Uh, big day today here on the College Prospects Podcast. Uh, coming to you today on the official start of my son's college career, his first game, game day. Uh, I'm, it's 9.59, uh, 9.50 a.m. Uh, I'm sitting in West Seattle, Washington. I'm about five hours from Pullman, Washington, where my son's going to school. Obviously, rivals from where I went to school at the University of Washington. Um, but today is a day where all those lines kind of blur. Uh, all the work, all the sacrifice, all the things uh, that we went through. And, I, and I, I, I really, you know, kind of hate the adversity story. Not because I hate adversity, but because everybody who makes it, um, you know, to any kind of 1% type uh journey or overcomes things, you know, to the 1% point goes through adversity. And those adversity stories are, I feel like are not overblown, but overblown. Uh, that being said, um, a day like today is a day that you reflect on all the things that you've been through, all the things that you had to work through, all the sacrifices that you made uh, in order to get in this situation. Uh, so I'm excited to share with you uh, a little bit about this journey. I'm excited to be with you uh, here today as we start another chapter uh, in this journey and talk to you about uh, some of the things that have gone on and, and how we've overcome them, as well as invite you to <clears throat> to uh, jump over to Watts Basketball on Instagram, Watts Basketball on Twitter, Um and, uh, and follow us along this journey. Uh, here we go. Um, before we get into the rest of the episode, uh, watchbasketball.com, uh, the place where we ignite the passion uh, for your dreams, game changers for life. If you have a player who's interested in playing college basketball, now is the time uh, today uh, going into the season to touch base with us and to start like living that journey on a daily basis, uh, the way you approach all aspects of this journey is how it turns out for you. You don't take anything for granted, any opportunities for granted. Uh, you learn how to navigate the tough times. You learn how to approach practice. Uh, you got to learn how to work through the school, through the AAU system, through the recruiting process, all of that, and Watch Basketball, uh, we help you do that. So WatchBasketball.com is the place to go to find out more. Um, if you want to sponsor a kid who may have challenges in life, difficulties that uh, are in in the way of their challenge, and you'd like to help us remove some of those challenges and, and help a, a kid who can't afford the training, who can't afford the travel, the things that is necessary, but is willing to make the commitment to do the work and to be a good citizen and do his academics, then absolutely head over to the watchfoundation.org and sponsor a kid in our program. However much, whatever you can do, whether it's five dollars, whether it's fifty, whether it's five hundred or five thousand, uh, all is greatly appreciated. The WattsFoundation.org is the uh, link, is the is the web address. And with that, uh, let's get to this show, man. I just the, the 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 thought process and the emotion that you go through, and I'm gonna go through this twice in one week. Uh, my daughter's at Western Washington University, and my son's at Washington State. Uh, they play Idaho uh, today. And I just, you know, take it back to the beginning. Uh, I remember when we first started the organized basketball thing, um, and we were up at up at Rotary, uh, the you know best program in the area to get exposure when you have the skill sets and you're ready for the exposure. Uh, they're hands down uh, in the Northwest uh, the program that puts you in front of the most college coaches and I remember being up there in, in third grade playing an in-house and you know I mean the the coaches there and the people who are there who I love and respect knowing my son knowing his pedigree knowing his dad played in uh, college basketball played professionally knowing his grandpa played in the NBA there was a lot of a lot of expectations or uh, anticipation 
uh, for what his career would be or what it would be like in the city. And I remember having a conversation in third grade, him asking me, "Hey, man, when you when you when you gonna let your son play AAU basketball?" And it's just like, I, my answer is, I don't know. Uh, maybe middle school. Um, whenever he shows that he loves it and he's committed to the craft is when I'm, I'm going to show up in a way that I'll, I'll go live in the gym with him. Um, but until then, I'm not going to push this thing. I'm not going to force this thing. I'm going to allow him, him to love it. I'm going to put some standards in place, uh, that he has to meet in order for this to be, uh, what I, I support in that way, what I dedicate my time to. Um, he, he has to kind of match a standard for me. And whenever that happens, uh, we do it whenever I feel right about it, or appropriate about it. And, uh, the response I got was like, oh man, it's different now. You know, it's different now. Uh, it's more political than it used to be. And then I was like, Hey man, that, that's all right with me. Um, you, you know, and I said, Hey, if we come in this gym at 17 years old and we're the best player in the gym and you don't want to take us because we weren't here in third grade, that's okay with me. You know, I think we'll be able to find some place to, to go to accomplish what we need to accomplish. Um, and obviously I wasn't going to wait till we were 17. However, you know, it's just like, yo, you're not going to hit me with the FOMO, right? Like getting, you know, I'm not taking my son to Portland to play in tournaments and all that stuff when he's only seven years old and, and, you know, doesn't have the foundational skills or it's just not that serious to me. Um, and I think that's one of the first kind of like, Oh wow. And then he, then they proceeded to tell me about a second grader who was playing up in fourth grade and how great he was. And, you know, and I just had to say, man, I, I don't, I don't need mine to be, you know, our objective is not to be the best fourth grader in the world. It just, I have no desire uh, to be that, to do that. Um, if he loves it, you know, when he gets to 17 or 18 years old and he could be one of the top five, six players, one of the top 50, one of the top 500 players in the world when he's 22 or 23 years old, then it's going to pay. That's when it counts. Um, and so that's what we're running this race for. And, you know, I said that in, in, in so many, so many words and have had to continue to, stay true to that and, and battle that uh, along this process because uh, the way that I did the journey with my kids was, was a little bit different um, than most people. And, and what I, you know, stressed to my kids and what I w w was, what was stressed to me. Uh, and that's, you know, if you build it, uh, they'll come. Um, if you can play, they'll find you. It's their job to find you. Uh, so don't, don't rush that until you really, can play until you have skills, you have game. And when you show up um, and it's time to to try to get the money to play, to try to pay for your education to pay. I wanted my kids to be thirsty. I wanted them to be hungry. And I wanted them to have a foundation that's built on work ethic and dedication, not on uh, the approval of outside voices and, and all of those things. And I could just say, man, like, you know, looking at my son's journey uh, through high school, you know, he, he he broke his broke his arm, um, both bones in his arm. Bone came out of his arm as a freshman year in a Christmas tournament. Uh, right before that game, uh, he was playing JV. And right before that game, you know, we got the phone call from the coach that he was going to be moving up to varsity. Uh, and he missed that opportunity. Uh, he was down for six months. And coming off of that, uh, coming off of that injury, which was when we were going to start AAU basketball, like seriously in high school, we weren't going to jump right into high school basketball. I mean, AAU basketball coming off of a compound fracture uh, in your in your forearm, and so um, we took our time, all right. And then then we had a sophomore season, you know, started varsity, had some really big games, third leading scorer. Uh, we had a game. As a sophomore, where I mean, Tari Easton's playing in the NBA right now, my son was the littlest dude on the court. West Seattle High School playing Garfield High School, the eventual state championships, state champions, and uh, I mean, my son had 18 first half points uh, and, and had his team go into halftime up three on on the Bulldogs, and they came out of halftime actually in the, in the second quarter. Brandon Roy, uh, NBA coach, 
I mean, NBA player, legendary, top five player in the NBA, uh, big time players on his side. He's putting guys in the NBA left and right uh, from Garfield High School, from Nathan Hale High School, Michael Porter and all that stuff. You know, my son's the littlest dude on the court. Don't even belong out there for real. Uh, except for he's got skills and game and he's got Tari Eason uh, face guarding him coming out in the second quarter. Uh, and, and, and son had three. He had 15 in the first quarter. You know, West Seattle's up on the lead. Then he has three in the second, but West Seattle still, you know, is in the lead. And then second half, Garfield did what they did. They took him out of the game and uh, blew the game wide open. Uh, that was a milestone for him. He's like, oh, man, like I, I can do this. And he snapped, right? Like he snapped and got in his own um, and, 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 and put, you know, some, you know, put B. Roy on notice, put Garfield on notice, put, put the city on notice. Uh, on a nice trajectory. Well, then COVID shut everything down, you know, like COVID shut down the AAU, which was the next step for that after the sophomore year and uh, shut the world down. And so to be a young athlete and, and, and to have some momentum and then to have COVID shut things down and then your junior year is a 10 game season with no playoffs and Oh, it was it was a frustrating uh, junior year. We, we played the same team that he went off on the year before. Uh, he's get six shot attempts, you know, coaches are criticizing him for being selfish and, you know, all of these things. And, and that, year, you know, having to coach him through that. I remember coming to the room and, and walking into his room is this room. That's my studio right now, seeing him staring at the wall, like just staring up. And I was like, man, what's up, man? It's like, man, I don't, I don't know if I really want to want to do this. I said, what do you, what do you mean? Like, I just haven't had the positive feedback. I haven't, you know, it's those moments where it's like, I had to walk out the room and, and let him sit with that and then come back and encourage him. Hey, man, you, you put this work in and where you're going is much bigger than what's right here in front of you. Some of the frustrations you're dealing with your high school coach and, you know, a high school coach that and this is not uncommon that doesn't recognize or see your full potential or whatever. But, hey, your goals and this is this was a lesson like your goals are your, your are your goals the same as his are your goals for yourself. Are you guys going to the same place? And it's like, no. Well, are his goals for you align with your goals for yourself? No, was the answer. Does he believe that you can do what you set out to do? Well, no, was his answer. I said, well, are you going to let that situation stop you? Or are you going to focus yourself even more um, to work through that situation and get to where you need to go uh, in spite of or despite of or whatever the word is, the situation that you're that you're currently currently in. And uh, so he developed some resolve, got out there and, and, you know, handled his business. There's places where your goals align. There's places where they don't. Uh, and that's what you need to do and, and not be looking for people, this is the lesson, and not be looking for people who don't have, you know, you you guys are together, that's a relationship, a co player coach relationship that you need to respect to a degree, degree, but you guys are in each other's life for a reason, maximize that reason, you know, go, go, go do what you got to do to help him uh, accomplish what his goals and dreams are, he might not understand the way that you do that the best, but that's for you to show. And then make sure that you're getting what you need to get out of the situation as well. But don't let that frustrate you. That's a part of what it is. As you walk through this journey, you know, every every uh, coach is not going to be a mentor. Every coach is not going to see. Um, every coach is not going to be motivating you towards your ultimate goals and dreams. Uh, and quite frankly, a lot of coaches don't understand uh, they, they never touched what you're trying to touch and there's a limit to how they can help you get there. And if you let them, they can hurt you, right? That was a lesson. Uh, and, and I'll say this, man, like going into this game, um, you know, he, he's never got a congratulations, uh, from his coach. You know, I've even heard from my own family that, uh, be, before, as we're going through this journey, as we're going through this process, as, as we're going, people he has no response, no, no, no reason to talk to. Uh, you know, my stepmom sat on my couch and said, "Coach, uh, 
said your son, you know, said Isaiah is not, why would coach say Isaiah is not a Pac-12 player? You know, things like that. It's like, okay, well, whatever. We we going to roll. We're going to do what we got to do, and, and we're doing it. Um, and so as we go through this journey, you know, playing for Washington Supreme, uh, Coach Howe, who I respect a lot, but him sitting and watching other players play, um, that maybe were more physically mature than him at the time, but definitely not uh, as good of a prospect. But him having to watch and me having to convince him that, hey, man, uh, you're the best prospect, if not the best, the top two prospects on that team. You know, like regardless, well, you haven't been a part of that program, but that's not what AAU supposed to be about. AAU supposed to be about playing the best prospects, not the people who, who, who know your plays or run your plays, in my opinion. Um, and that's not where the game is right now, but that was just my opinion. And, and then, you know, starting off at Friends of Hoop, uh, which was a great opportunity to, to get going, get our feet wet. I remember going over to Idaho and then playing the first, you know, round of games with this Friends of Hoop second team and, and just being terrified of the environment and, and overcoming that and then getting on the first team and, you know, having ups and downs, kind of being afraid of the environment, you know, and, and playing behind um, other guys and, and, you know, having some, some sparks and moments, but inconsistency because he didn't have the experience, but that talent was there. Uh, and then watching that talent uh, unfold and, and, and taking the journey and going to South Kent and, and watching that momentum create, but then getting hurt again, man, it's been a, it's been a wild, long ride, but I'm just happy to say uh, as a family, um, We've stuck behind each other. Uh, we've supported each other. We've encouraged each other. There's nothing greater than getting the weekly or bi-monthly phone calls uh, that I get as we get closer together as a father and son. As I get closer together with my daughter as a father and daughter, as they go through the things that I've prepared them for at the level that they've prepared for and they see the truth in our preparation in their daily life uh, about what this thing is about. And so um, it's a huge honor. It's a huge uh, blessing. And I've, you know, talked about the high school experience. I've talked about the AAU experience. You know, ultimately we went and played what, what I said at the start, the best place for exposure when our time came. Um, you know, one year we got called and, 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 you know, you got to listen to the feedback in the industry. You know, Daryl didn't call me back, you know, when I was calling to, to see, you know, where he was at or whatever. Um, the next year I called and he called back right away. I didn't pick up, called back right away. Um, got him on the team and same thing, experienced some ups and downs as, and through his maturity. Um, but we navigated it. We navigated it. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the high school coach. I'm grateful for Washington Supreme. I'm grateful for uh, Friends of Hoop. I'm grateful for Rotary. Um, I'm grateful for the, the entire experience because each one of these challenges, um, each one of these experiences has, and, and the way we've approached it, helped build him and shape him into where we're at now. We're uh, we're looking at carving out a successful uh, college career, and that will not come without bumps. Um, it already has its 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 bumps, but they're good bumps, uh, and his his approach to them is healthy, and he's had those challenges in life before um, that he can lean back on. Uh, you know, one thing that I was did not want to do. I didn't coach my son in AAU. Um, just uh, I, I had a little team, and we ran a couple tournaments. But I was not his primary coach, and I did that on purpose because I wanted to coach him through these challenges because I knew the challenges, how challenging college is. And to prepare him for that, I had to let him experience that. I had to let him see, um, you know, how different guys have favor in different situations and how you have to overcome those things. And so now when you're a freshman and you're feeling good about how you're playing and you got to be patient and wait and wait for opportunities and and earn your playing time, and that's not foreign. That's not foreign uh, to him, um, and he's prepared for those challenges, and I'm really excited about uh, the coaching staff. I'm really excited to get to know this team, and I'm really excited to be a fan of 
uh, Washington State University. And I'm going to say it here. This isn't the first time, but it's the first time, but not the last time you're going to hear it here. Uh, but go Cougs. I never thought I would say that or utter those words, but it's getting more and more comfortable and excited to get on the road and, and enjoy this journey. Uh, one of the next upcoming episodes, I'm going to have to have him uh, on the show and, and, and talk about uh, this stuff from his perspective. Um, but I appreciate you tuning in. Head over to watchbasketball.com. Uh, in, in the description of this, we're going to have some NIL gear that you can get to support uh, Isaiah Watts over there on this journey. Uh, we're going to be announcing um, camps that, he, that he'll that he be the lead on or, or, or our, our college kids will be working with their middle school kids uh, this summer. And, and the proceeds for that will be shared with our college players. So be on the lookout for all of those things. Links in the description. This was the College Prospects Podcast, just sharing a little of our personal journey uh, here and, and some of the challenges that we've overcome and just reflecting. You know, I'm, my, my, my dad sitting downstairs, uh, limited mobility. Uh, one of the things I know he's motivated by and one of the things that's, that's disappointing uh, for me today is that I'm not able, I'm not in a position to be able to take him over there with me. I want to get... Uh, my car back on the road, the beast, or or get a uh, a travel van so that we can put him in there and and get him over there right now in in our car. Uh, Ten hour round trip in in two days would be a little much for him, but we got to get there. We got to get this gym filled. I know it'd be great motivation for him to continue to work. Uh, he made so many sacrifices, and you know, he calls my son his reason for living. And so on this. Game one, uh, not to have him over there with me is going to be a little bit disappointing and frustrating, but at the same time, there'll be more to come, and, and I'm going to put him in the car and get him get him over there with me. This is a family deal, and we'll talk about this going forward, but you know, they say you shouldn't live you know, through your kids, but absolutely you should. There's a right way to do it, and there's a wrong way to do it, but if you don't think when I hit the shot uh, or to... to Put us up. I mean, look at look in the stands when I hit the shot to put us up one against UConn in the Sweet 16. Uh, there's a picture of us when 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 the first round of the tournament when we beat Xavier University. Uh, me and my father ran right to him and embraced him because uh, it's a journey that we go through together. You go through this as a family, um, and it's important that you know this. Th these days are big days for the family. So, hey. Peace, love, and basketball. Thank you guys for tuning in. I got to get out of here. I got to get on this road. Uh, look forward to, to the show next Monday. And, and matter of fact, uh, it's basketball season, so we're going to up the show. We're going to drop on Mondays and Thursdays. Uh, I'm to Pullman, five-hour drive today. Wednesday, I got my daughter's tip-off dinner. I got a little funny story to share about that on the next episode that will drop Thursday. College Prospects Podcast during college basketball season. We're going two times a week. You heard it. Tune in. Hit that like, subscribe button. Share it with somebody who needs to hear this information. Peace, love, and basketball. I'm out.